because we are actually doing an Engage New York Eureka lesson today. Ooh, love them. Yeah, I like Eureka. Eureka! And we're doing module four, lesson 20. And as you can tell by our little clip art, it's about measurement. That's right, we're doing all about measurement. In fact, let's take a look, Mr. Wara. Let's take a look at the learning target. Okay, let's look at the learning target. Our objective today is to convert mixed unit measurements and solve multi-step word problems. Now, I'm going to be honest with you, that sounds pretty heavy, but you know what? I know we can do this. Okay, now let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here we have problem one, conversion of large units to small units. Okay, we're doing a change. And you may have noticed that on our previous lesson, we were converting yeah, smaller units to larger units, and now we're doing larger units to smaller units. And here we have yards and we have feet, and yards is the larger unit and feet is the smaller. I think what would be good on this problem is to go ahead and to model this problem uh, using the tape diagram. Cameraman. Thank you. I'll do that over here. And what I love about this tape diagram is it's so easy to make. You know, you just draw a rectangle. Who can't do that, huh? I bet even a cave boy could do it. That's right. It's pretty easy. And then now we're just going to go ahead and label the bar here is four and one third because it's kind of like the whole part. So I'll do that little bar here. Four and one third yards. And now looking at it, it's like I could almost partition the bar into four equal units, couldn't I? Because I have four and one third yards. So let's partition the bar into four equal units to represent full whole yards. And so that's easy, right? One half, half of a half is a quarter. There we go. Nice. I love it. And then, of course, now we need a smaller unit because we have that one third up there. But since this is going to be one yard, couldn't we just break this one into thirds? Then this little section here will be one third yard. Seem OK? Yeah. And, and it is the same reality is true. Four and one third yards is the same as one third times one yard. So let's write that down. Four and one third yard, like we've done before, is equal to just four and one third times one yard. Okay? No no difference there. And now by that tape diagram, it helps us a little bit because now we can rename that one yard in regards to feet. So if one third yard, yeah, so in this case, it's going to be important to know that one yard is equal to three feet. So here now what we can do is that one yard is we can show this is simply four and one third four and one third yards, right? Or four and one third times three feet. Notice we don't have a fraction this time because we're going from a larger to a smaller unit. Well, before we multiply here, let's go ahead and express this four and one third as an improper fraction. And that's going to be 13 over three. Because if we had four, we have four holes and, and thir three thirds is one hole. So that would mean 12 thirds would be four holes and one more would be 13 thirds. So now we can write this as 13 thirds times three. So now we need to find what is the product of 13 thirds times three. Well, here we have 13 times three, which is 39. That's over three, which is going to equal. Yeah, isn't that something? 13. So now if we come back up here, that means Four and one third yards is going to be equal to 13 feet. Nice, eh? Woo, yeah. Let's go on to another problem. Now, this one here we have three and a half gallons is equal to so many quarts. Again, I'm just reminding myself of the fact that gallons is larger, okay, than your quarts. So I'm going from a larger unit to a smaller unit. Let's go ahead and rename this gallon is equal to just three and a half times, remember, just that one gallon. Now what we want to do is we want to show that three and a half times, and then how many quarts are there in one gallon? Isn't there four? There's four quarts in one gallon. So now we can go ahead and let's go ahead and write this as an improper fraction, which is seven halves. We're going to multiply that by four. Now we just have seven times four, which is 28 over two which you can see works out really nice to be 14. Happens to be 14 quarts. 
We could also, like we did in the last problem, show this with a tape diagram. That total here, we could show is at three and a half gallon. Okay, and then we were going to break this up into, we could break this up into quarters. That means each one of these, would, we'd have four gallons. And let's draw a line here showing that this is three and a half. Okay, and then we could also just think of this down. If that's one gallon, then this could represent the one gallon. And then there's four quarts in one gallon. And this is just a tape diagram to kind of show you what's going on here. And make sure that the algorithm is clear. Okay, let's move on to another problem. Yeah, problem two says conversion of small units to larger. Okay, we did this one time before. And again, what's different about the last problem is this one here is going from smaller to larger. So then what fraction of one yard is one foot? And the fraction of one yard that is one foot would be one third because if there's three feet in one yard. Let's think about this problem this way. See what two whole number of yards will 11 feet fall between? When you think of two whole number of yards will 11 feet fall between? Well, is it nine feet equal to three yards since we have three feet in each yard. So nine feet would be three yards. 12 feet would be four yards because four times three is 12. So this is going to fall in between three and four yards. So again, that's just kind of an estimation so we can see what we're doing here. So we have 11 feet then is going to equal to 11 times just at one foot. And again, we can, that's right, we already know that this is going to be one third is the yard. So one foot is equivalent to, equal to one third yard. So now we have 11 over three, which is 11 thirds. And if we express our answer into yards, you can see we're going to end up with three and two thirds yards. Okay, let's, let's move on to another one. Now here we have three and one third quarts is equal to how many gallons? Now I am going to just rewrite my equation here. It's three and one third quarts is equal just three and one third, right? Times one quart. Now when I get to this point here, all I'm doing is I'm just showing this. And what's going to help me is to rename this into that conversion factor. Well, if I have three and one third times one quart, I need to understand, well, how many, since I'm trying to go into gallons, so what is one quart of one gallon? And isn't one quart of one gallon just one fourth? Yeah, one quart is one fourth of a gallon. So I could rewrite my equation as three and one third times. Now I can put my one quarter. This way I can change the unit to gallon because there's four quarts in a gallon. And now I have some of the stuff we did in an earlier chapter, right? Let's rename this as 10 thirds as an improper fraction. We're going to multiply that by one fourth. And now we end up with 10 over 12. Now, yes, we can simplify that. Let me do that down here. So 10 over 12 divided by definitely a two, right? Is going to give me five, six, but it's going to be gallons because that's the unit of measure that we changed to five, six gallon. Now, these should be coming a little bit easier each time. Now we have a word problem here with problem three. It says a container can hold four and a half pints of water. So again, this is going back to our, think about what our learning target was. Our learning target was we're going to convert mixed unit measures. We have been doing mixed because this here is mixed. We have a whole number part and a fraction part. So that's what we're doing. And we're also solving multi-step word problems. And this is definitely what we're going to be doing here. So how many cups of water can two containers hold? Okay, so let's go ahead and first think this is definitely a two-step problem. Um, I first have to confirm convert my four and a half pints to cups because that's what the question is asking us here is how many cups then I'll have to double it so let's take a look let's draw a tape diagram for four and a half pints and then what I want to do here is you know so four and a half times two cups is the expression since there are two cups okay in one pint so I'm going to show it this way I'm going to go here's my four pints and then I'm just going to add this little guy on here would be my half, one, two, and one half is here. So I have, here I would have two cups, two cups, two cups. You can see we can actually figure this out. So this is actually four and a half, okay, times that one pint. So that means I'm going to have four and a half times, and we already determined that's going to be 
two because there's two cups in one pint. So I could put t times two because now my unit of measure is going to turn two cups. And now uh, let me bring this up here. I'm going to change that into an improper fraction, which is nine halves. I'm going to multiply that with two, which is equal to 18 over two, which is equal to simply nine. So nine cups. Okay, so remember our nine cups here is actually four and a half pints equals is to nine cups. But because there's two containers, now I have to take my nine cups times two, which is going to be 18 cups because it says how many cups of water can the two containers hold. And it says a container can hold four and a half pints of water. We determine nine cups is equal to four and a half pints. So how many cups of water can two containers hold? 18 cups, okay? Definitely a two-step problem or a multi-step word problem. That's it, my friends. Hey, hey. I do believe I hear some music in the background. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now, my friends, it is time to say hasta la vista. It is. It's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun. Now, live long and prosper.